So welcome. My name is Arsenio Buck. I am the uh, TOEFL coach that you see here on Become Dentist USA, the wonderful collaboration I am doing with Dr. Valentina Martinez. And so here I am today. If you guys don't already know, got to explain some things before I get into the internal preview of what we're going to be doing. And then we're going to go from there. The new TOEFL has just come out. Okay. Uh, I would say probably about July 26. It's been a while already, almost two months. And I know a lot of you out there are preparing to take this new TOEFL if you haven't already. Now, with that being said, there's a new academic writing and it's phenomenally better in comparison with the independent essay because the independent essay, everything was arbitrary. Meaning you don't know what constitutes as a five out of five or a four out of five or a three out of five or anything, you know? Grammar, you can have a hundred grammatical errors per essay and still get a very high school. Jesus Romero being one of them. He went from a 21 to a 24, would still have him between 50 and 100 errors per essay. So when the independent essay finally gone away and they gave us this easy academic writing task in which we only have to write over 100 words, it makes our life so much easier because these are real academic tasks, not created from people who we don't even know who they are, nor do they even work for ETS in regards to the essay prompts that some of you may have gotten. Right? So with this new academic writing task, it is phenomenally better. Yes, the reading has become a little bit more difficult, but I still have students getting 27, sixes, fives, fours, and threes. All right. So I was under the impression before this test that they were going to make the reading impossible to get a high score. But it seems that even though you missed three to four out of 20 of the questions that you receive in a 32 minute to a 36 window, you could still get a pretty good score. So the reading has become the most difficult, but this academic writing is straightforward. I love it. So what we're going to be doing today, let's break this down. I'm going to be showing you exactly what, what this is. We're going to break down my five star in terms of how I got a five out of five in the academic writing. And then I'm going to do one live from the ETS website. Okay, now remember, for all of you that do not know, I just realized this. Now, know that your essay is being submitted to an AI tech. There are no real examiners or people who actually grade your essays. This is not IELTS. This is all AI tech. Remember, ETS is about maximizing profit, not doing the right thing. Okay, but it makes it a little bit easier because we're just, to be honest with you, we just have to fiddle faddle with a couple of things and it makes it very, very easy for us and it's straightforward. So I'm going to tell you this, you're graded in both essays, integrated and this new academic writing on a scale of one to five. If you get a three out of three here and you get a three out of three in the, uh, in the, inter what is it, in the integrated, you're going to get about an 18 to 20. If you were to get a four, on here or in the integrated and vice versa a three that means seven out of ten overall right that means you would probably get about a 22 to a 23 if you get a four in the academic writing and a four in the integrated which i hope everyone gets because that four is the sexy one this is when we could get up to that stratospheric realm meaning getting a 24 25 26 now if you get a five year which is possible just like what I had written down, or if you get a four in your integrated and you get a nine out of 10 overall, baby, we are on fire. So that's how you're graded, okay? There are gonna be some things that you're gonna see throughout this process. Again, a lot of the practices are on ETS. There are a heck of a lot of other practices on Best My Test, but to be honest with you, that website hasn't been updated in four years. I remember going back there, what is it, back in 2019, teaching TOEFL students out here in Thailand, and those same thing, it's, it has not been updated at all. The only thing that's been updated are the academic writing tasks, and there are a hundred of them. But to be honest with you, this, this free website, the ETS and everything, this is where you can get everything done. So I'm going to be breaking down different things. This is a little bit different from what I have on my uh, own course because I give two different types of essays, but I realized that the sample that I'm going to be giving you here is the one that scores the highest. I had another student by the name of Mary Suarez, and uh, she was getting four out of five, four out of five, four out of five, and she watched this, and I'm like, okay, I like that. She's like, no, but this is what you actually, you know, put on your, your writing course. I'm like, I know, but the thing is, we got to see, you're getting consistent fours. If we get a five, Mary, 
And if you get a four out of five in the integrated, we're in the tres digitos. Makes everything a hell of a lot easier, right? And so that's what my goal is. So let's go on and let's start breaking this bad boy down. So preference questions, agree and disagree. There are so many different types of questions, but they revolve around genres, okay? Now, I did write down preference question here just to give you an idea of what would come up, and you're going to see how it really is when I do a live breakdown of what we're gonna be going over and stuff, which is gonna be fun because I don't know if I'm gonna get a four or five, okay? So <laughs> I don't know how to pray, but <laughs> y'all pray for me. Okay, and so this one in particular is about film studies, okay? Now, there are things about film studies, economics, marketing, you name it, every different genre, but you don't have to think too much. Because I know some of you right now, you're like, oh my God, Arsenio, mira, 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 my, oh, oh, my idea, my idea, my idea. You don't have to worry about the idea. Okay, and you're going to see exactly why coming up real soon. Got to express your own personal opinion. You got to, and I'm going to give you a five-step process. We're going to break it all down, baby. And I've actually highlighted some things. And to be honest with you, if you say Arsenio, how can I get a four? Because to be honest with you, for all of you who are watching me around the world, to get that four, what it comes down to, if you get a four and you get a three in the integrated minimum, you're between a 20 and 22. At least that's your average. See, I try telling everybody. And Indira, I don't know if you're going to watch this, but big shout out to Indira. Um, you know, she was one that went up five points in her reading. I told her, I said, listen, you can't score anything in the teens. No 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. I don't like teens. I don't even like the 20. I don't like the 21. 21 is not too bad. But if we get a 23 and all of them, we get a 92 overall. That 92 overall, I've had students, Daniela Jimenez, so many different people get into Boston University, you name it. Even with the 92, I've also had students get into Boston University with the 100. The higher, the better, obviously. But if you could get an average of 23, 23, 23, 23, we're in business, so we got to stay out of the teens. We got to maximize our skills. And to be honest with you, for all of you out there, hey, it's all about following that system. And I get it. A lot of you have expectations for yourself, and you push yourself so much, and then you end up getting overwhelmed, and you get this anxiety. And you're like, oh, I want to do better. I want to do better. And then you get overwhelmed. You start crying. Then you start having these setbacks, and you start worrying, and then you go into deep states. There's so many different things that happen. But take it step by step. No one where you are right now and knowing by execution and making sure what sentences you're going to write in specific areas, which I'm going to be showing you, you're going to go into the stratospheric room. That is my phrase for today. That means we're going to hit the jackpot. All right. So here we go. This is kind of what it looks like. You guys are going to see the real stuff coming up on uh, when I actually do my own essay prompt from the ETS website, which is going to come up right after this. But this is what's going to happen. To the left, you're going to have a professor. Now, the timer's on. You're going to get 10 minutes. You're going to get 10 minutes. Once that thing comes up, the clock is coming down. You're at 9.59, 9.58, 9.57. You got to read this, this, and this. But what we're doing, when you read the left, we got to see exactly what is happening. So I like to tell my students to start in this area, as you can see. So with so many internet streaming services available for viewing at home, do you think cinemas will cease to exist in the future? Will it come a time when people stop going to cinemas in its entirety? Boom. Okay, so we're talking about cinema. Streaming services. You guys are like, what's that? Some of you, maybe. Apple TV, Hulu, Netflix, Disney Plus. I don't know the other ones. Okay, those are the only ones I know. Hell, I'm surprised I even know Hulu versus cinema we know that things are happening so what's going to happen some of you are like oh my god but i don't have any ideas this is what the two comments over here are for see sometimes we can just grab their idea and expand on it based on our previous experience and the things that we actually know got it so if we check this out and it says over here claire said in my opinion cinema cinemas are here to stay for thousands of years people have been sharing the collective experience of watching a show whether it was a live performance at a theater in ancient Greece or a recorded film in cinema in today's society. Now, to be honest with you, when I read this and when I was doing it live, I was like, 
man, that's a sucky idea. I can't expand on that. So I went to the one below and it says this man, I agree that cinemas are becoming obsolete. Mm, I kind of like this one more, but I don't think it's because of technology, but I do. Many of the best films these days are being produced at, what is it, 10 to 12 part miniseries with much more focus on character development. So he's basically saying that these streaming services are making series and people are more enticed to series. Now, what do I know from my own in terms of what's happening right now? If you guys don't know, there's a big writer strike. Nothing is being made. All late night show hosts are gone and it's because the writer strike. And the thing is, a lot of these writers do write a lot of the big blockbuster movies. So what if they are paid to write independent films on some of these streaming services and they don't have to worry so much about the big blockbusters anymore? Now, remember, I don't know too much about it. I just know about these little things. So this is what I ended up going with in regards to my write-up, which you're going to see right after this. So I didn't like Claire so much, okay? I didn't like the other guys so much. I'm just like, oh, man, you guys are... Okay, but I do believe it's because of technology. So with what I know, I'm going to build it from there. Using everybody else's. Now check this out. This is my prompt, and this is what how I was awarded a five-star. This was 111 words also. This is what you're going to do. Write this down. Here comes the training. While I do understand both points made by the students, write that down. For all of you out there right now, all of you are going to write the same damn thing no matter what. Got it? And you're also, after the comma, going to capitalize your I. I know a lot of you out there, you'd like to write a little small I. Capitalize the I and say, I believe that. That green is your template. Got it? So when I did this, well, I do understand both points made by the students. I believe that cinema absolutely has become obsolete simply because after this simply because is my supporting detail it's kind of like what i did in the speaking what i did in the speaking course right and so nonetheless simply because of the change in times in hollywood just as i had explained to you now this is what you're all going to do let me scale back that's called your introduction after the simply because is just a very short, maybe six to seven word phrase in terms of what you're going to be speaking about in your example. See, over here, I wrote currently, you will more than likely write for an example. See, there are different approaches to this. It could be problem and solution, cause and effect, cause and result, compare and contrast. Your goal is going to be to get from this currently the example to the therefore. It's a one, two, three step process. And I'm going to show you exactly and then we're going to do a live one and see how I go about doing this one coming up real soon. So here it says there is a writer strike. There is a writer strike. Here we go. Or I could say, for example, but I said currently there was a writer strike happening in California and this is sending shockwaves throughout the entire film industry. Boom. That is the introduction to my example. That is sentence numeral dos. So I hurry up and put a period just to lay the foundation. And now I'm going to explain a little bit more. Some of you could say, uh, you know, I know some of you, instead of saying, for example, you could say first, sometimes you may give double examples and stuff like that. But nonetheless, here it says, what this indicates, see, I'm following up my idea. What this indicates is that without the writers, uh-oh, this is what I said to you, late night shows and big blockbuster movies no longer exist. Boom, I laid the foundation. What is that? That's a cause. This is the cause. This is the result. So what is happening right now? What? How does this relate to everything that I've already read in regards to the other three? Well, the focus will now switch to independent films where writers are able to write for smaller budget movies on streaming services. I grab some ideas from the streaming services. I use that vocabulary term and slot that bad boy right in there in terms of what is going to happen. It's kind of like a cause result effect, cause result effect. What's happening right now 
this is the result. This is the effect on the writers and how this is going to impact streaming services. So then how am I going to put it all together in terms of the cinema? You see, I haven't even mentioned cinema just yet either. So it's always good to reiterate some of the vocabulary that you see either by the professor or the two students just to make sure that you're on track. Keep asking yourself like, okay, am I on track? Okay, am I on track? Okay, am I doing this right? Okay, got to make sure I got this. Okay, let me keep doing this. Okay, let me keep doing that. That's exactly what I did. So then I summed it up by saying, therefore, that's a green. Okay, you can see that. That's a green bold. You are going to write that. That's correct. You're always going to say, therefore. You could say in summary and this and that, but to be honest with you, I get a lot of fives by doing therefore. Therefore, comma, streaming services, comma, in general, comma, are going to take over because the way human beings consume movies, I'm sorry, because the way human beings consume movies have changed dramatically, okay? Comma, as well as the tribulations in Hollywood. I saved up everything. And guess what? With the cinema and everything, the entire idea and the question, I reiterate, reiterated that and put it right into my therefore. I grab the streaming services, the central idea. They're going to take over because of people consuming how people consume movies right now and especially what's happening in Hollywood to basically sum up my entire idea. That right there was a, a hundred and 11 words and it was a five out of five. So with that being said, how can we summarize this? Okay, Arsenio, so what are we looking at? Maybe about a five, six sentence write-up. Your introduction will always be that green template and will, you will always have that supporting idea. Whatever the supporting idea is, you're gonna put, for example, grab that support and write a central thesis in that second uh, second sentence. Normally after that, it's going to be the result of that. And then sometimes there's a solution or an effect or a suggestion in the third sentence, which I write here. So the focus, da 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 da, da right? This one is an effect. And then at the end is a therefore. That's five sentences that I had written down. Some of you probably say, and, um, you know, one of my students, she wrote like nine sentences or 10 sentences. She's from Mongolia. And, I, and, you know, she's like, oh, man, you know, oh, my God, I see exactly what's going on. Because I broke down her paragraph in Roman numerals, Roman numeral one, A, B, C, D. And it just felt like she was jumping all over the place. Still got a four, but it lacked coherence. This is the big thing that you're going to be great in all when it comes to the academic writing coherence. And you must have it. Got it? So are you ready for me? to do my very own. I'm going to grab this and here it is. So ets.org forward slash TOEFL. Who gives a damn? I will send the link to Dr. Valentina Martinez and she will send it to all of you. These are all the academic questions. 28 of them. Best my test has about 120. Do you think, would I suggest you paying for that? Nah, I think 28 right here is good enough. Okay. Now, here we go. I don't know which one I'm going to get. But we're going to work. We're going to work in real time right here because I am the TOEFL coach. I am the man. I am here as a savior. I'm not a guru. I'm a savior. I'm not an oracle. I'm a savior. I'm not a messiah. I'm a savior. I'm here to help train you guys so you can reach your end goal. And so what better way is it to do my own, my very own right here? So I have no, no idea which one I've done before. So I'm just going to go with 22. So here we go, people. The chaos begins. So let's check this out. We're loading the screen. And here it is. Just as I have told all of you. 10 minute. It's on right now. We got a sociology class. I'm going straight down to Dr. Gupta. Okay, and I'm going to start right here at that middle area, like I told you. Let's begin by discussing the following viewpoint. The best way for a family to strengthen family bonds is to work on something together. For example, cooking, garden, or working on a craft project. Do you agree or disagree with this viewpoint? Okay, family bonds, strengthening family bonds is by doing activities together. Could be. 
So what I'm probably going to do, I think I already have this in mind. I'm thinking about going uh, going about a double example. But we're going to see if this double example gets me a five or it just sits me in a four. Let's go read Mr. Andrew over here. I agree. Families feel more connected while working together rather than while doing passive activities, such as watching TV. While working together, family members have an opportunity to engage in in-depth discussion and share their thoughts and feelings. But Claire said, I don't think working together is the best way for a family to strengthen bonds. She doesn't really have much of an argument. It's just ridiculous. She's like, it is difficult to find tasks that are interesting for everyone. So what the hell are they going to do? Oh, like nothing. Sometimes, sometimes they just do not provide anything. Okay, so you don't have to run with it. You just have to acknowledge it and say, what the hell is she even talking about? I don't like it. Bad idea. Maybe some of you do. But I like Andrews, and I, being a personal development slash high performance coach too, I'm going to approach it from that perspective. Considering what has happened, obviously, with you know me and my wife learning different things in terms of freshwater fish, saltwater fish, all that stuff. I'm just going to include it in that. So it's going to be a double example. Got to get 100 words, but I do not know if it's going to get me that five. Let's begin. Eight minutes. While I do understand both points given by the students, I agree with Andrew's sentiment. Ooh, that's sexy. What does sentiment mean? Idea. You're welcome. You're welcome. Write it down. I agree with Andrew's sentiment simply because by doing activities... You will definitely strengthen the family bond. I don't know. I'm just bullshitting now. I got 27 words. I got 27 words in 40 seconds. I'm not worried about that. For all of you out there, you got to be good at typing. Okay? For all of you out there, you got to be good at typing. All right? Hopefully, I'm going to come up with a keyboard course. And that's what ended up helping me 20 years ago. Mm. All right. Let's go. So what am I going to do? I'm going to say, for example... All right, so now remember, while I do understand both points given, I grabbed and said, I agree with Andrew's sentiment, simply because by doing activities, comma, you will definitely strengthen the family bond. It's good enough. Now I'm going to go into something that I can explain in its entirety. The first thing that comes to mind is hiking, camping, and getting into new hobbies, okay? For example... A family needs to always be driven by external motivation in terms of doing new things, such as camping and other hobbies. Ah, okay, I laid the foundation. So here, it's going to be a little bit different. Like I said, I'm going to be approaching this. This is probably the hardest one because it's not that problem solution type of thing. It's not like, what would you do if you had an extra green area or this or that? It's not one of those things. It makes it a little bit difficult, okay? My wife and I, a few years ago, took up fresh water and salt water reefing. This brought a vast amount of challenges, but it helped strengthen our communication in general because of how diligent we had to be in having, oh man, I thought about coral, uh, livestock and fish tanks. Now, you're probably saying, okay, Arsenio, you're at five minutes. You got 94 words. I know you're going to throw the therefore. So I have time to explain to you. For example, a family needs to always be driven by external motivation in terms of doing new things such as camping and other hobbies. Mm, I could have used that as the example. Uh, well, actually, I did use that as the example. But then I just decided to give an example for my own life because... If I don't, I'm just going to end up giving multiple sentences about, okay, 
a family could go camping over here and this family could go over here. And what that does is write in the result of what it does, the positive feedback and everything, breaking it down that way. But instead I just use a real life example. And I've heard about this through so many different personal development coaches, like, you know, Jay Shetty and stuff in terms of doing new things with your wife, doing new things with your family that you've never done before. And this is what keeps that, that awe in that, in the, the suspense, like, oh my God, is this going to work? Or we know what we're going <laughs> to, oh, what, what am I doing? You know, that's exactly what happened with me. I'm like, what the hell am I doing? There's so many dead fish, you know? And so, but I learned so much, especially with my wife. And there was so many problems, but at the same time, there was so much growth. So based on my experiences, I put that in here. I'm at 94 words. I'm going to slot in that conclusion. Do I think I'm going to get a five? I don't know, but let's see. Therefore, by engaging in activities that I had never done before alongside with my wife, it kept our relationship fresh and also suspenseful. I have no idea. Suspenseful, that actually sounds weird, but who cares? It's an AI tech. <laughs> it's an AI tech. So, people, I literally just did the academic writing. Now, I'm going to submit it right here. All of you are going to be able to submit it and see where you're at. I don't know what I'm going to get, to be honest with you. I don't know, you know, but hey, you got to try. You can start off somewhere. Whoa. So here we go. Three, two, one. You're going to press next. You're going to press continue. I probably got a four. Oh, a fucking five. Who would have known? That's how we do it. Okay. This is exactly what you can do in terms of your academic writing. I did everything pretty much in bulk and stuff like that. Uh, you know, there are so many other different resources and tools that I have. Again, Dr. Ma uh, you know, Dr. Mari um, oh my God, Dr. Valentina Martinez. Oh my God, you got the Maria, you got the Isabella, you got the Isabella, you got all these, all these Spanish names are just jumping all over me. And for some reason, I just keep repeating Celia Cruz. I don't know what's going on with me. I got so many different resources, right? And I've done so many different things to see my students grow. And I'm very excited to see a lot of my students getting their writing and speaking scores coming up probably in the next few days in the next week, because man, they've been getting fours. I've seen their academic writing. And if they're getting a four, my goal is how can we make it better to get a five? Does that make sense? Like, how can we make it better to get a five? If you're getting a three, I'm gonna say, how can we get a four? And you're integrated. I remember uh, one of my students, she got a, a 20. And then she did her integrated homework and it, I thought she was playing around. I was like, oh, you're so funny. You just wrote a big story. That's so funny. And she's like, what? And I was like, you did that on the test? Yeah. I'm like, what? That's not what I took. What? And so it's crazy because she got a 20. So if she got a 20 right and one big ass paragraph, I'm excited to see a 26, 27. See, a lot of you, you got to figure out and you got to think from a high performance perspective. I probably have already said this on all the other videos. Like you need to figure out exactly what can I do on a consistent basis to work towards the goal that I am trying to achieve. Got to be realistic in managing expectations because expectations always lead to disappointment. Okay, so, but with that being said, as a TOEFL coach, I've seen hundreds, if not thousands of students. I have an ESL podcast that has almost a million downloads already. I've taught people from all over the world and I, people in every single corner of the world in every country around the world listen to me because of the things that I do in terms of helping people strive into another realm of success and stuff like that. By doing this, by engaging in that high performing mindset and saying, okay, this is where I am now. How can I get here? Where do I need to get? Where do I vision myself in two months time? Okay, I'm not that good at reading. So what do I need to do? What resources do I need to get in touch with so that I could get better on a consistent basis? See, that's called growth. Does that make sense? Going back to the academic question that I just did. So with that being said, 
Gracias to all of you special and wonderful individuals out there. I want to say big blessings to Dr. Valentina Martinez for allowing me to do this one. Obviously, just adding on to the course and stuff because the independence finished. And again, if you guys have any questions, obviously, just ask Dr. Valentina and stuff like that. She already has all my links or whatever it may be on the, the website. And I just want to say special thanks to Become Dentist USA. Dr. Valentina, you're doing work, wonderful work with spurring people on to success with their boards. And my goal is to get you guys from your TOEFL to get that score to get you into that university. So welcome to the party. Okay, I'm going to stop seeing it. Thank you so much for everyone who has tuned into this. I'm signing off now. If you guys got any questions, reach out to me. I'm your host, as always, over and out.